Hi everyone and uh, welcome to series one using Dialog Editor to create reusable dialogues and richly formatted output. So the, so the Blue Sky Statistics application has been built to ensure that it is really easy for you to create reusable dialogues and richly formatted output for any existing R statistical function, data manipulation function, graphics function, or any new uh, function uh, in R that you write. So when I talk about richly formatted output, I'm talking about tabular output that you can cut and paste in Word and Excel and interact uh, more freely with. So with that, I'll go through the agenda. I'll give you a, a high level overview of what's involved in creating reusable dialogue with richly formatted uh, or tabular output in uh, Blue Sky Statistics. And then I'll get into a detailed example showing you uh, how to create a reusable dialogue uh, in the application. So let's start off with the high level overview. Uh, basically, it involves uh, designing a dialogue for your analytical function. It involves designing the output so it can be automatically displayed in a rich in the rich interactive tables that we support. And you will see that there is a wide variety of objects that uh, we support out of the box. Uh, all the common uh, objects in R will automatically display in tables. That's um, matrices, uh, 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 data frames, uh, uh, the, the H-test class when you're doing hypothesis testing, uh, ANOVA and several other classes, uh, objects of those classes will automatically display in our output. Uh, you need to think about uh, how you want the R graphs to display uh, and uh, then you need to know how to install the dialogue. So in this video we'll focus on A, B and D and C is very very straightforward as well. I will cover that in another uh, video. So uh, let's start off with part A which is designing a dialogue for your analytical function. At a high level, there are four simple steps involved. The first is picking up the analytical function in R or the custom function uh, you've developed. The second is designing the dialogue. That is, what controls do you want on your dialogue? Do you want a list? Do you want a text box? Do you want a group box? And mapping all the controls on the dialogue to the uh, R function. Uh, it'll become more clear in the next few slides. Then you configure the dialogue, so it generates the R commands with the parameters correctly populated or substituted. Uh, and the fourth step is configure rules so users don't commit inadvertent or uh, avoidable errors. So for example, if you're running a one sample t-test, uh, you don't want to do a one sample t-test on a nominal variable, you want to do it on a scale or numeric. Uh, uh, and when I talk about nominal, uh, nominal is a factor type in R. And, uh, you know, if you've designed a dialogue and nobody's chosen any variables for analysis, you don't want the OK button button or OK button enables. So you don't want them clicking on the OK button if they haven't chosen certain prerequisite uh, uh, options or prerequisite uh, variables for analysis. So very simple and straightforward stuff. So uh, let's jump into the example. Uh, we will create a uh, one sample t-test dialog using the generic t-test command. Uh, now, obviously, in the application, I have a little more sophisticated uh, one sample t-test, which is already baked in the application that you can look at. Uh, I, I will give you the location where that dialog is uh, located uh, towards the end of the presentation. but. For a simple example, we'll start with the one sample t-test, a dialogue for one sample t-test that supports uh, uh, running the one sample t-test for a single variable. As I said before, the one sample t-test in the application already supports multiple variables and is more and is much richer. So we'll use the t-test command. Uh, the t-test command, uh, I've just put my mouse over it, uh, is something that you can easily get in R. Uh, it is in the statistics package. It accepts the following parameters, x, uh, 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 a non-empty numeric vector of data values, y. Uh, we're not really going to be concerned with y as we're doing a one sample t-test, but it also holds a, a non-empty numeric vector of data values. The alternative parameter uh, is for the alternative hypothesis and accepts uh, values of two-sided, greater or less. 
uh, mu, a number indicating the true value of the mean. We will ignore difference of the means as we're concerned with the one sample t-test for this example. Uh, paired is a logical indicating whether you want a paired t-test. We will ignore this parameter as it's not needed for a one sample t-test again. Uh, var dot equal is a logical variable indicating whether to treat the two variances as being equal. Uh, we will accept the default value of var dot equal equal var dot equal equals false. Confidence interval is the confidence level uh, formula. Again, we're going to ignore it because uh, we will specify the data set name with the variable being analyzed. Uh, subset again, we will ignore and we will accept the default uh, option uh, or the default available with the get option uh, any action. Okay, so uh, a rough idea of what the command uh, uh, that the dialog will generate, and this will become more clear in the next few slides will look like is uh, something like this. So x would be uh, the uh, variable in the data set and we will uh, reference it as data set one dollar tg1. Uh, the, uh, the alternative uh, has uh, two sided and uh, the uh, mu value uh, takes the value in the text box and the confidence interval takes the value from text box as well. So, uh, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, design uh, the dialogue. And uh, here you see uh, the dialogue is pretty simple. You have a source variable list, uh, you have a destination variable list to capture the variable we want to analyze. Uh, we have uh, the, a, a radio uh, group box to capture the alternative hypothesis. We have a text box to capture the confidence interval. We have uh, another text box to capture the null hypothesis or mu. And uh, you see basically how uh, each of those controls uh, is, is, is essentially populating a parameter in the syntax. So that's what the arrows show you. The destination control uh, uh, populates the X parameter, the radio group populates the alternative parameter, the uh, text box uh, populates the mu and the confidence interval. Okay, uh, so I've just overlaid uh, how uh, the, the controls on the dialogue uh, are, are automatically populate parameters within the function that uh, gets fired in R. So with that, let's go and take a look at uh, how we can create such a dialogue in the bSky uh, dialogue uh, editor application. So when I launch the application, I get this help uh, a dialogue that pops up. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead and read it. If you don't want to ever see it again, click the radio button and click OK. So uh, the, the, the application basically has uh, three panes. I'll go ahead and create a, a new uh, dialog. And uh, the left-hand pane essentially contains all the controls that you can drop on your canvas. The middle part, uh, the middle center part is the canvas that actually represents your dialog. So uh, to just illustrate, I'll click on source variable list. And here you see that I get a source variable list on my uh, dialogue canvas. This dialogue canvas at the end of the day becomes the dialogue. Uh, the bottom portion are just properties associated with the canvas. So the dialogue has a title, it has a height, it has a certain uh, width, it has help files, so on and so forth. And the right hand pane is essentially uh, holding all the attributes of the uh, control that I just dropped on the canvas. So every control you drop on the canvas needs to have a unique name. We will call this uh, source. This represents the source variable list. I will go ahead and drop the destination variable list to hold the uh, variable I want to analyze in the one sample t-test. And I will give it a unique name as well. I will now drop a, a radio group to hold my alternative hypothesis. Uh, again, when I want to drag and drop a control, I click on it and I can move it or I can, uh, with these uh, uh, square boxes, I have the ability to resize it as well. But the square boxes are at the corner of the control. So I will give the uh, radio uh, 
group box uh, the name of uh, rd grp control for radio group box control okay and then i will go ahead and give it some radio buttons so the first radio button i'll give it a unique name of rd1 and i will give it a text of uh, population mean not equal to mu so this is nothing but the caption okay it's just the text that will display with the radio button and i'll set the default to a selective i'll hit enter i'll give create another radio button and this is for the population mean new and I'll create another one I'll leave it unselected because I want the first option of the radio button selected I'll create the third radio button which is population mean smaller than mu and I will click OK. Now again, I'll resize this appropriately so all the uh, options can be seen very clearly on the screen. Bring it up a little bit. I can uh, give the uh, radio button or the radio group box a name. I'll call it alternate hypothesis. You can call it whatever you want. OK. And now I will add two more text boxes, one to capture the confidence interval. So let me look for the text box control on the left hand side. And I will give it a unique name of text box one. And I'll create another one for the value of mu and I'll call it text box 2. Okay, now I will go ahead and uh, increase the height of my dialog just because it's getting a little cramped up. Okay, and when I increase the height, I'll just space things a little appropriately. I'll uh, make my uh, source variable list a little bigger. And the source variable list just so shows you all the variables in your source data set. Okay, so the idea is uh, choose the variables that you want and drag and drop it to the destination data set. Now, I can also add a move button. And a move button makes it very easy for me to move items between the source and variable uh, data set. So again, with every control, I give it a unique name. I'll call it move. And I'll give it the input list, which is the source variable list. The name is source, so I shall call it uh, source. And the target list is destination, so I'll give it a name of destination. All right, so uh, things are looking pretty good. And... Uh, I think all I want to do is give all my controls a helpful label. Okay, so that's very easy to do again. A label is nothing but text above the control that tells you a little bit more of about what it does. So I click label, I get a label control. Okay, and be careful as you lay out your, di your, your dialogue, uh, just because of the color uh, of the items, uh, when, you, when you add a control, it may not be easily visible. So just look for the... Uh, corners uh, or look carefully at your screen and you'll see the new control that you've uh, added to the uh, dialog. So I will give it a name of lab1 and I'll give it a text property. A text property is nothing but the text that's going to display with the label. So the text is source variables. I'll click on it. I'll resize it. I'll add another label for the uh, destination variables. I'll give it a unique name of lab2 and the text will be called destination
Okay, I'll create uh, another label for my confidence interval. Okay, I resize that a little bit and I create the last label for my mu and I will call it the uh, null hypothesis. Again, you can call it whatever you want. All right. Oops, I need to give it a unique name first and label and and your unique names need to be contiguous you can't have a name with label space 4 okay that's not going to be allowed but your text can have spaces okay so I've done a fair amount of work here I want to go ahead and save this dialogue I've created and as soon as I hit save you'll see that you need to enter a title so I'll go ahead and enter a title. Obviously, I want my dialogue to have a title. Okay, I can save it. I'll just save it to the cloud uh, personal. Okay, and uh, I'll call it, I'll overwrite the existing dialogue I have. Okay, and what I can also do is I can preview this dialogue. Okay, so this is exactly how this dialogue is going to look like in the application. Okay, and if I'm not happy with this, I can resize it or do whatever is appropriate to make it look better. I'm pretty happy with it right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, create the syntax that uh, this dialogue is going to fire when you click the OK button. So in order to do that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and copy syntax from my text file. And you can copy this from R or wherever the program is or where you've created your function that you want to invoke. And I click this little lookup button here and I paste the syntax here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, again, I can make this bigger if I want to, uh, is I'm going to get rid of the variables I am not interested in. I'm not interested in Y, so I go delete. Okay, uh, I know that the alternative hypothesis will come from the radio group control. Okay, mu will come from text box 2. And uh, paired, I'm not interested in at all, so I don't need this. I'll keep the defaults for uh, var equal, and the confidence interval will come from the first text box. Okay, and uh, more importantly, obviously, we can't forget about the destination variable that will come from the destination control. All right, so I am going to go ahead and click save. And now we'll go to the PowerPoint uh, and just verify that we've completed step two and we will move on to step three. In fact, we didn't, I want to show you, so we did specify a title. Uh, we didn't give it a help file. So let's go ahead and give it a help file. So the help file is nothing but the file that gets displayed in the blue sky application when you click help. In this case, I don't have a help file yet, but I'll go ahead and give it a help file. Okay. And uh, let me see. I think I have a file called help somewhere here. Uh, don't see it. I think it's in the directory dem demo and I click one sample help and the file gets added and I go ahead and save. All right. So the other thing I can also do is create a sub dialogue. 
And uh, to create a sub dialog, I, I don't really need a sub dialog here, but I'll really show you what you need to do. You create a button and, uh, you know, assume that I put this button in an appropriate place and I call it, let's give it a caption of options. And uh, when I, uh, for example, let's call it op options. I'll give it a caption of options as well. Okay. And when I click on sub dialog, I can define a sub dialog. In this case, I don't really need a sub dialog and uh, I don't need an options button, but I just thought I'd show you that. I, I will cover this in uh, upcoming uh, uh, videos as well. Okay, so I've deleted it. I'll just go ahead and click save. All right, and let's go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, we have a completed step two now, and I'll move on to step three. So in step three, we're basically configuring the dialog so that it generates the R command with the parameters collected correctly substituted. So if you looked at uh, the command at the bottom, you see that uh, that uh, x, uh, what gets substituted by the destination uh, variable control is data set one dollar extra. Okay. And uh, with each of our controls, we give you a lot of options to control how the content in that control gets substituted in the command. So a simple example is, uh, is uh, I want uh, the uh, variable in the control to get substituted as a string. So I have give you the option to make it a string. Uh, maybe you want to just uh, uh, enclose the variables by a semicolon, uh, or you want to you want to preface the variable name by the data set name. And this is the option we're going to choose for the ttest command because that's how we want to generate the command. Uh, in the same way, we want to go into the alternative hypothesis and make sure when the first radio button is clicked, two sided is passed. When the second radio button is clicked, greater is passed, and when the third radio button is clicked. Uh, less is passed. Uh, the same applies to the text box controls. We give you a rich set of uh, options to just uh, replace the, the text in this control as is or to preface the text that the user has entered into the, into the control by a fixed string or to create an array based on what the user has entered in that control. Okay, so basically all we're trying to do is make sure that you pick the right option so that the command, the R command you, you create has the parameters appropriately uh, populated. Okay, so let us go back uh, to the application and we will click on the destination. So two things to uh, do here. Uh, since this is a one sample t test, uh, I want the maximum number of variables to be one. Again, uh, this is just as an example. So that means this uh, this uh, control will not have more than uh, one variable, okay, or cannot have more than one variable. Uh, now again, the, the, the one sample t test in the application is more sophisticated and you can drag as many variables as you want into the control. Right now I'm just showing you the value of this property. So I've set it as one as well as the t test command that we're wiring it to in R just accepts uh, a single variable. But again, in the application there is a multi variable t test control. All right. So now let me go into the substitution settings and there you see I have a rich set of options to determine how the values in that control will get substituted in the command. So basically I want to prefix the variable by the data set name followed by dollar and I'm not really concerned with any of the other uh, variables. All right, so I go into population mean and uh, as soon as population mean is selected, I want uh, I want uh, uh, two-sided to get uh, passed, all right? So uh, let me show you uh, how we will do that. So we will go ahead and uh, type in two-sided here. I can type in uh, two-sided uh, 
I can put a coat before two sided okay and uh, let me go to the next one and again I will say uh, greater and I'll go to the next one and I'll change the syntax to less okay so uh, the when 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 you leave it at the default value and if you remember the default value uh, that I typed over was percent uh, value percent uh, a default of true is passed and in this case I don't want to pass a default true I want to pass a default in the case of the first radio button being selected two-sided the second radio button greater and the third radio button less and again I will just make sure that in fact uh, you don't really uh, uh, what we'll do is we'll I'm quite sure that uh, we need to pass a string and I'll show you how we do that I'll just make it put single quotes as you're seeing and again if I had the default I had to change the default because if I didn't change the default what it would pass if each of these radio buttons was selected was true which I don't really want right now all right so I'm going to go to the confidence interval and when this dialog displays I want the default value of the confidence interval to be 0 0.65 0 0.95 I'm sorry okay all right and uh, I need to widen up the null, null hypothesis and the same thing with the other text box I want a default value of zero okay now I don't have to worry uh, about a user uh, blanking out the null hypothesis and the reason is the t-test command if the null hypothesis is not uh, specified the same applies to confidence interval so a user when this dialog displays uh, let me just save the dialog and preview it uh, so you see that uh, when this dialog is displayed in the application, it does have a confidence interval of 0 0.95 and a null hypothesis of 0. So even if a user blanks it out, uh, that's not a problem. Uh, I can still press the OK button because the t-test command automatically defaults uh, the confidence inter in interval to 0 0.95 and a null hypothesis to 0 if no values entered. So I don't really have to worry too much uh, uh, about, uh, about that. Okay, so let's go back uh, to the uh, presentation and uh, you've seen how I've been able to configure the dialog so it generates the R command with the parameters correctly substituted. In this case, I've shown you how we get uh, the data set $1 extra. I've shown you how we uh, specify that when the first radio button is selected, two-sided will be passed when the second uh, greater and the third uh, less okay and uh, the others have been text as is. oh I didn't show you that so I've got to go in here and the default is text as is. and just to show you the other options on the text box you can quickly uh, read it uh, in the application and get familiar with it and this uh, other text box is text as is. so whatever text you specify it'll uh, it'll accept it all right so uh, let me go back and save my work again and I will come back and now uh, move on to step four and step four is all about configuring rules so that users don't commit inadvertent errors all right so very simple uh, at the end of the day uh, even I'm doing a one sample t-test I want to make sure that uh, the user is only allowed to drag and drop or move scale variables into this destination variable control you can't do a t-test on a factor uh, variable uh, the other thing I want to make sure is that uh, if there's no variable in this uh, uh, that there's no variable that be, that's been dropped into this control the OK button is disabled on the other hand when I drop a valid variable into this control the OK button should be enabled okay no variables OK button should be disabled if there's a variable in there the OK button is enabled all right so uh, I, I need to define that rule 
And uh, in the same uh, in the same way of thinking, if you can, you, it, it, it's very easy for you to create a rule that if uh, somebody blanks out the confidence interval uh, to disable the OK button. In this case, uh, I, I'm not really too concerned because if someone blanks out the uh, confidence interval, the t-test command automatically is written in R in a way that it'll default it to 0 0.95. Okay. And uh, the same applies to null, the, the, the null hypothesis. Obviously, the t-test command uh, didn't uh, enter a default value. And you can see if you study the t-test command, there is a default value. I would have to make a rule to make sure that uh, a blank parameter was not passed. Obviously, in this case, the blank parameters, a blank parameter is handled uh, very effectively. All right, so let's go back to the application and uh, oh, let's let's uh, let me let me introduce uh, one other property now before i show you how to set up uh, this rule you need to be aware of the can execute property and the can execute property is a property available on all controls except labels and move buttons and uh, the basically the way it works is the ok button on a dialog is enabled only when every control on that dialog has can execute equals true. Okay, so let me take you to the application. Here's the source variable. Uh, I have can execute equals true. Here's the destination variable. I have can execute equals true. Here's the alternate hypothesis. I have can, I don't really, I don't have uh, can execute with a uh, radio group button, but I have can execute with uh, the uh, uh, radio buttons within the radio group when you see can execute is equal to true uh, and here I have can execute equals true as well so if I preview the dialog you will see that the OK button is enabled but I don't really want that okay obviously I don't want that because I don't want someone clicking the OK button when no variable has been selected in the destination Okay, also when you preview the dialog, you'll know small you'll notice small mistakes like I just saw, right? When we preview it, you saw that the destination variable needed to be widened a bit. So it gives you very easily the ability to just take care of uh, simple mistakes by previewing. Okay, so now I will go and uh, go back to my presentation for a minute. So as I said, every 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 control has a can execute property. And uh, the OK button on the dialog is enabled only when every control on that dialog has can execute equals true. Again, let me show you that really quickly. I preview the dialog. This is how the dialog is going to look in the application. And you see, and you see the OK button is enabled. And it's enabled because every uh, control on the dialog has can execute equals true. I also said that doesn't make sense. So uh, let me repeat again. It doesn't make sense because I don't want the OK button enabled when there is not a single uh, variable in my destination. Okay, so how do I set a rule that uh, that enables the OK button only when I have a single variable in the destination variable? Okay, so back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so. Basically, I'm going to show you how you set two rules. One is uh, making can execute false when the destination variable is empty. This disables the OK button. And then making can execute to true when the source variable, when the, and the, this, this, this should not be source variable, it should be the destination variable, that's a typo here, has one or more items. Okay, so let's do this first. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set can execute on the destination variable to false okay and what that will do though is when i preview the dialog i will see the ok buttons disabled however when i drag a valid variable into the dialog the ok button is still disabled which is not what i want all right so i want to set a rule here that says if there is one variable dragged into this destination variable i want the can execute property to be made to true okay so i know that there's a property called item count in this example item count is three okay which is uh, just because it's in preview mode you're seeing three there but basically my rule is very simple my rule is going to be triggered on a condition okay and what i'm going to say is if item equals 
0 or I can say if item count is less than 1 okay I will go into my setters I'll click add and I will say the control name the control name is nothing but but the destination I will say destination and I will say the property can execute okay is set to false okay very simple and I'll add another rule that says if the property name can execute I'm sorry if the property name items count and you have to spell it correctly if it is greater than zero that means there's one or more variable I want to make control name destination that's the name of my control okay that's the name here that I type I want this property name can execute set to true all right Okay, so all I've basically done is I've said, hey, you know what, by default, I know when this dialog displays, this is going to be empty, hence I'm going to make can execute set to false, and that will automatically disable the OK button. On the other hand, as soon as I uh, drag a single variable in, item count becomes one, and then my rule gets triggered as soon as there's one item count that makes can execute set to true okay so if item count is less than one I want can execute set to false and if item count is more than one that means it creates more than one item I want can execute set to true okay that means there's a valid variable and I can disable the OK button all right so let's go ahead and save it and preview it again all right so right now by default when i come into the dialog can execute is set to false hence the ok button is disabled i'm gonna drag this variable in and yay can i i can now click the ok button in the same way i can remove something from it and it becomes empty again and the ok button is disabled okay so uh, the rules can get a little tricky but uh, if you just watch that video carefully, it's fairly simple. Uh, in this situation, all you're doing is you're checking item count. If item count is zero, you're setting can execute to false because if item count is zero, there are no items in this destination variable. Hence, you want nobody to click the OK button. Then you define a rule that checks the count. As soon as the count becomes greater than zero, you know it's one and you enable can execute. Okay, so that property is important and you just enable and disable it. So with that, uh, we are pretty much set and we're ready to move to the uh, next part, which is designing output so that it can automatically be displayed in rich interactive tables supported by the Blue Sky application. All right. So, as I said before, uh, you know, there's really not much thought that uh, you need to put in. Uh, if your function returns an object of the following classes or a list containing members of the following classes, the Blue Sky application will automatically generate richly formatted output for you, richly formatted tabular output for you. All right. So, if the uh, t-test function uh, return or, or your function returns a data frame, a matrix, a table, a f table, a list, uh, uh, x tabs, h test, t-test returns h test. So, we automatically format the output. Uh, you're covered. You don't have to do anything special. A GLM by so there's there's a whole lot of objects here, and I also encourage you to review the documentation, the tech notes for additional details on how. Uh, you uh, should design, uh, you should think of uh, designing your output, okay, for more details. So uh, basically, all you need to do, obviously, since the t-test command returns uh, a, a object of class h-test and we automatically handle 
uh, uh, displaying objects of type htest uh, in the uh, in the uh, application all you need to do is add one more line to the syntax okay and we'll go ahead and uh, do that right now okay so here is the command that generates the t-test let us store the results of the t-test in an object called bsky one sample t test okay and then we will call the function bsky format and we will format that object all right so i've got uh, everything pretty much uh, set up uh, correctly uh, what i can do is just to be extra safe i can put this parameter in a character array i don't believe it's needed but let's go ahead and do it uh, you know what I don't believe we need it I think we should be fine without it okay everything looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and save it I can preview it one last time yep looks pretty good uh, I drag a variable okay button is enabled I remove a variable okay button is disabled I can click my buttons I can type in here command is exactly what I what I liked okay and I can save it. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, just very review what we did. So we went into the syntax. We added one more uh, line called bsky format, uh, and that is the command that generates the table. The bsky format handles the display of the richly formatted table of the results of the t-test. Okay, so let's move on to part C now, which is uh, installing the new dialog. All right, so a couple of cases to talk about here. Well, the first is the R function is already available in an existing package loaded by the Blue Sky application. Uh, all I need, uh, what I need to do is I can go to Tools, uh, Inspect Dialog to review the dialog created. It's, if all is well, I'll go into Tools, Dialog, Installer. Uh, I'll right click on the category and select install new command. Uh, I will then restart the application. I can do tools package to show install packages uh, and I can do tools package to show currently loaded packages and I'll show you that uh, quickly. Now if the R function is available in a package that is not installed, uh, in my case, uh, obviously in this example, the uh, one sample t-test is in the statistics command and it's already installed. So I, what we'll be doing today is talking about case one, but in a future, uh, uh, in, in, I believe in, the, in one of the series, uh, I've, I've got, uh, uh, I've created a more complex command that I've created a package for and you can see uh, a case two in action. Uh, so just, just go through the series uh, uh, of the videos and you'll get that information. But basically I have to install the package. I've given you the exact uh, command to install the package uh, from CRAN or install the package from your local folder. You need to load the package. Uh, when you load the package, you have two choices. You wanna, if you want to load the package all the time, whenever the application is installed, uh, you uh, go into options, configuration settings, default packages, packages, and make it a default package basically and restart the app. If you want to load the package on demand, that is uh, you want the user to go in and say load all user, user packages by clicking a menu, you can load it. Uh, do it that way as well. So we, we give you two options uh, and I'll show you that really quickly in the application. Uh, if you want to uh, Uh, load a package always you need to add it to your default packages if you want to load a package on demand you add it to your user packages and once it's in your user package all you need to go is go into tools package and say load user session packages okay 
the default packages are launched uh, are loaded whenever the application is um, launched all right so uh, with that uh, let us go ahead and close this dialog save it close it and let's go into the application and we'll go into tools dialog installer and uh, let me see if I have a place where I can place it. Uh, I will go into means and I will say install new command and I will go into the one I just created. Let me see if I can get the date modified. That's the one I want. I'll open it up. Okay, and here it is. I'll click OK. Okay, so it tells me I have to restart the application, which I will do. Okay, and I will go back to my program where I have this installed. You don't have to do that. I'm just showing you where it is. You'll have the shortcuts automatically configured. Uh, I was doing something on my machine and accidentally deleted my shortcuts, but you can go into, into the application. and launch the application and obviously you launch the application from the shortcuts oops I probably launched the wrong application oh there it is okay and I will open up a data set And I'll go into analysis, I'll go into means, and here there I see my command. I can pick up a variable and I can run the command. Okay, so I had some sort of issue with it and I will, oh, I had the C, I put the C there. All right. So there you clearly see in the syntax that I did something wrong uh, in my command. So let me quickly go back and uh, rectify that. Okay, so let me show you really quickly uh, what the issue was. Uh, I'll say yes. Let me open up the dialog. And you see, here's my mistake. I had this little C here that I forgot to delete and that generated an error. And now it will work as a charm. So you, you, have, you, you, you definitely will see some of these few issues and it's good that it happened so you can learn from it. Uh, so all we do now is go back, launch the application. We'll install the new dialog. Okay, you don't have to worry about that error. That, that, that is not a defect. That is something I'm testing. And uh, I shall go in. I'll go into Tools. I'll go into Dialog Installer. I will overwrite the dialog I installed. Yes. There it is. Exit. You have to, whenever you install a dialog, you have to re, uh, restart the application. Okay, I install it again. 
and I should be good to go. Oops. Not that I'm installed, I'm looking for the application. Should come up any second. Maybe I didn't. There we go. I open up our data set and I run the command. And there you see the results of the one sample t-test. So let's quickly go into the summary. Uh, so we've just completed series one, creating a reusable dialog for an analytics command with richly formatted tabular output. Uh, you know, for references, you can see the one sample t-test and the independent sample t-test that supports multiple va variables under analysis means. Uh, and let me show you that really quickly. Uh, so under analysis means you have the multi-variable one sample t-test so you can drag as many you can do a t-test on multiple variables here uh, you know you also have the ability to handle missing values enter a confidence interval uh, the same applies for the uh, independent sample t-test also you can review the dialogues uh, in the directory uh, sample dialogues so uh, the these these dialogues are nothing but uh, you know you can open up any a dialogue is basically a b sky file so when i saved it uh, what i got was a b sky file and we've uh, given you all the dialogues all the sample dialogues um, very many of them you know all the applications all the dialogues for all these commands are available in the uh in the uh in the folder sample dialog so you can look at any sample dialog of the bsky application and see how it's constructed see how the rules have uh, been written uh, see how we've laid out the dialog uh, also in uh, series 2 we'll create uh, uh, i'll show you how you can create more sophisticated dialogs with the dialog editor i'll also talk about rules in more detail uh, in series 3 we'll create a reusable dialog for a data manipulation command in series 4 we'll create a reusable dialog with graphic output and in series 4 i'll show you uh, not only graphics uh, uh, but uh, other other capabilities as well and uh, in series 5 i'll create a command with a dialog without a dialog okay so you can have commands with no dialog pop up it directly shows you uh, tabular output a simple example of that is uh, uh, numeric summary so I can go summary analysis uh, uh, summary statistics for all variables there's no dialog that pops up and I see the results in a tabular format and uh, then uh, in series 6 I create a reusable dialog with tabular output for a complex R statistical function uh, which involves uh, tabular output so this is the example where I'll show you how you can create a package and uh, load that package so uh, that's it thank you very much and do not hesitate to contact us with any questions uh, we are more than happy to walk you through uh, building a dialogue we're more than happy to uh, to help you with the product uh, we, we really pride ourselves on the ability to support you all right so with that said uh, we have come to the end i want to thank you for attending and look forward to you using the product and uh, emailing us support questions. Thank you very much.